should you pivot or should you press on? Should you persevere? This is one of the questions that you are probably going to face as a founder at some point, and it's a tough decision, and the implications of it can be massive on your business. Today, I'm going to walk through how I actually went through this decision-making process for myself recently with a multi-million dollar business opportunity that got put in front of me that would have required some changes. And I'm gonna give you a framework that you can use whenever you face this question going forward because I almost guarantee you that it's gonna happen. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? I'm Ray Green, former executive turned nomad entrepreneur for over a decade. I was the managing director of small and mid-sized business for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. I led turnarounds for private equity groups as a CEO. And for the past five years, I've been coaching and consulting entrepreneurs from the sunny Cabo where I live with my family. And one of the questions that I have faced over and over and over again as an entrepreneur and a business person has been, do I pivot? Do I need to change directions? Do I need to change my offers? Do I need to change my markets? Do I need to change something? Like, do I need to go this direction or do I stay the course? Like, do I persevere? Do I keep pressing on? It is a challenging question because it's all based on uncertainty, right? Like at the end of the day, as entrepreneurs, we are placing bets and we're saying, all right, is the probability of success and what I want higher over here, or is it higher if I stay the course? You know, for some groups, like in the, in the startup space, a lot of people glorify this, right? They, they glorify the pivot and they'll tell you the 10 companies that started as one thing and ended up as a billion dollar thing and another thing. Those are good stories. Like those are, those, those things happen and sometimes pivoting is the right thing that you need to do in order to win. The problem is when people talk about pivots, they oftentimes don't talk about the cost that is associated with it. Changing directions in your business means you are giving up something. And the reason is most results in business I have found come on an exponential curve, meaning there's a whole lot of work, like really early on. You're figuring out markets, you're figuring out messaging, you're figuring out offers, you're figuring out all of these things. And so you invest a ton of effort and a ton of energy and a ton of resources into getting something moving, kind of like a flywheel, right? So it's a lot of work to get going, but once you get going, once you find the market, once you find the offer, once you find the messaging, the positioning and everything else, then shit starts to take off. Then it starts to get really exponential. And there are certainly cases where the pivot was the thing that made the business. Making that change was the thing that actually turned it into a success. But way more often, it's the constant and perpetual pivots and changing of direction that actually leads most businesses to fail. Okay. There's a selection bias when we look at the five or the 10 case studies where we say, hey, it started as a toothpick company and it ended up as a tech company, right? There's a handful of those and we go, God, look at those. We should keep doing that. What we don't see are the hundreds, the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of businesses that never get going because the founder couldn't get traction. When you do figure it out, right? Like when you invest the time and you do keep pushing and you do get through that part on the, on the exponential curve, you start to see the big results later. And What's really mind blowing is how many entrepreneurs have pivoted or changed directions right before there was a breakthrough. And most of the pivots that we make tend to be because we're overly optimistic about the thing that we think we wanna try or the direction that we wanna go. And we're not optimistic enough about the thing that we're doing. So we're putting in the effort, again, the exponential curve, we're on the front end, we're putting in a lot of effort, we're not seeing the output and we think, you know that one, I, I get to skip this process and jump straight to the exponential curve and it doesn't happen. What actually happens is people keep starting over. They keep starting over at the beginning of that curve when it is the hardest, when it is the most frustrating, when it is the least output per unit of input. So when you pivot, when you make that change, you are almost guaranteed to move back to some degree. And depending on how substantial the pivot is, like if I'm selling consulting services today, and I pivot into selling a taco shop tomorrow, the opportunity cost is significantly higher because the assets and everything that I built while working really hard on the front end of this consulting business probably don't translate very well into the taco shop. And that's why when I think about pivots, I do it very methodically, right? Like I, I used to change direction very quickly all the time. And in some cases, it was the right move. In a lot of cases, it was not the right move. Now when those opportunities come up, I pause, I think through, what is the actual opportunity cost? What is the, ch what are the real challenges of this new opportunity, this new direction, this new thing? What are the real opportunities from within the business that I have today that I might be overlooking? And I just go through a different decision-making process today than I would have five, 10, 15, 20 years ago as a business person. So I just recently went through this process myself. And there are a handful of questions that I asked myself that 
led me to a decision. Not only did I have conclusion, not only did I make the decision, but I felt strongly enough that I had conviction that I was going to stay that course. Now, the first question that I ask myself is, is this aligned with my North Star? I call it vision founder fit. There's an exercise where we go through and we say, hey, the business that you're building is aligned with what you really want for yourself as a founder later, right? Like I cannot tell you how many businesses get built without somebody thinking, do I really want that business, right? Like, is it really aligned with what I want in the long run? So there's certain things for me as an entrepreneur that I've got to think about. I want location independence. I like living in Cabo. I don't want to move. I don't love traveling. Am I going to have control of my schedule? Am I going to have the flexibility that I want? So like, these are the characteristics. These are the things that I go through and think, is this opportunity even aligned with what I want? If you don't have a North Star, then that's where you've got to start. Like that's one of the challenges that you may be having and why every opportunity seems so attractive because you don't actually have a filter. Are these things aligned with my values, my vision, and what I really want for myself in the long run. And that's got to extend beyond money. If this business succeeds, if it takes off and does exactly what I want it to, do I actually want that business? And you would be surprised how many people are building businesses right now that end up being prisons later. Second question I ask myself is, how far of a departure is this from the current path that I'm on? Because the way that I look at it is, the more different this new thing is, the further of a departure that there is in this new opportunity from what I'm already doing, the higher the cost and higher the risk. I've probably already built some assets in what I'm doing today. I've already built an audience. I've already built a brand. I've already created some traction. I've got some part of a list to market to. I've got some recognition. I've got some awareness. Like I have done some work up to this point. And if I'm doing consulting to MSP companies or IT businesses, and I decide, I'm going to offer some sales coaching to that. It's a huge departure, right? Like you can leverage the base and the assets and everything that you have up to that point. If I say, I'm going to do a taco shop. Okay, what that I've built here is useful over there. Well, probably not a lot. For the assets that I've built, for the effort that I've put in here, how many of those things are going to transfer to the new opportunity? And the larger the departure, the more of a difference that there is, fewer assets are going to transfer. So the higher the risk, the higher the cost. Okay, because I have to start over on those things. And remember, exponential curve. Okay, so I'm starting over on a bunch of stuff. So I'm moving back to the hardest part of business, which is the beginning in a lot of facets of the business. So I look for opportunities that I can compound. I look for things where everything that I've built is still useful and I can leverage it for another thing. Third is, what is the real motivation behind wanting to change from my own experience and from coaching hundreds, if not thousands of founders, what I would say is there's usually two reasons people want to change. One is they're getting resistance in the current offer in the current market, and they're mistaking that initial resistance, which you just need to figure out. You just need to iterate your way through. You just need to test your way through and start to tweak things and optimize them and figure that piece out because it's just the natural byproduct of business. Like some things are hard. So they confuse that initial resistance for failure. And they say, oh, see, like we're getting, we're getting pushed back on this. And we, you know, this cold email is not working or my paid ads aren't working. You know, like this just isn't working. Instead of thinking, hey, you know what? Ads aren't working today. What do we need to do to fix it? Because chances are in the next thing, we're going to run into some resistance and we're not going to develop the muscle and the grit that's necessary to bust through those walls because we're always looking for the easy answer. Second reason, shooting you straight. Some people are just addicted to chaos. When things get moving, like they just want to change it. Like they are stuck in a perpetual state of pivots in their head because they won't commit to something. They're addicted to the chaos. They, as soon as things start working out, like they're going to throw a wrench in this. They're constantly thinking about what they could be missing out on. They're constantly thinking about the next new thing or they get bored, right? Like this thing is rolling along. Let me just throw a wrench in this whole thing. That's why there's the saying, the fish rots from the head, which isn't technically true. But when they talk about businesses and they say the fish rots from the head, what they mean is it comes all the way up to the founder, comes all the way up to you and me, the entrepreneur. And if we can't develop the discipline to stay the course, if we can't develop the patience to see things through, if we can't figure that out, our business never will. The fourth question is, are there the similar opportunities equally large and equally attractive opportunities in the direction or the business or the model that you're currently working in, because it's super easy to get caught up in the grass is greener, right? Like I see something from the outside and I go, looks like a really like great money-making opportunity. Seems pretty easy. Like, you know, it doesn't seem that hard to set up and you go, okay. And it's the grass is greener mindset, but I can almost assure you that whatever direction you're potentially going to go, 
there are going to be challenges. It is going to be hard. And a lot of times we get so caught up looking at everybody else's yard that we don't stop and think, hey, you know what? Like, do these opportunities exist in my current business? Like if I just invested all of that energy into creatively and objectively looking at my current model, my current business and what we're currently doing, could I actually uncover the same or even better opportunities where I don't have to start over, where I already have some momentum, where I already have some leverage, where I already have some assets built? Many, many times I can tell you if you took the same look, the same view of optimism that you have of other opportunities as they're coming your way of those other shiny objects and you applied it to your own business and you said, hmm, I could retool some things here and get the results that I want. That opportunity is sitting there more times than you think. The fifth question is, are you building with paddles or are you building with sales? Okay, so a friend of mine once said, you can build basically any business in any industry if you're willing to paddle hard enough, fight hard enough, work long enough, like actually let's like do all of the work. If you were willing to paddle hard enough, you can build virtually any business that you want. But the key to a lot of great founders is they're looking for businesses where they can throw up a sale. Like instead of having to grind it out, instead of having to paddle harder, they're looking for opportunities where they have a unique advantage. If it actually legitimately has an opportunity for you to throw up some sales, like if you're in a business where you're just paddling and you're paddling and you're paddling and a new opportunity allows you to legitimately throw up some sales and succeed faster or more efficiently, then maybe it's a good opportunity. But if it doesn't, then it's just another business that you're going to have to paddle through. And nothing wrong with paddling. Like that's, I mean, that's the nature of the beast. But where you can find opportunities, you certainly find them right? Like where can I get more leverage on my time? Where can I get more leverage on my money, on my resources, on my effort, everything else? And if that new opportunity creates that for you, then there's worth exploring. And then the last question is talk to future you. Play the tape here. Like 24 months from now, 36 months from now, are you going to be having the same conversation with yourself? Are you going to start this new thing, get all excited about the dopamine rush initially, you're setting things up, and then you're going to hit these initial walls. Like, Oh shit, I got to get leads. Oh shit, I have to craft a good offer. Oh shit, I've got to sell this thing. Oh shit, I've got to deliver this thing, right? Like you're going to run into the same things and go, hmm, maybe that's actually a better opportunity. Be as objective as you can with yourself because it's really important that, you, that you're honest with yourself. In 24 months, what is the likelihood that I'm going through the exact same decision-making process? And the easiest way to look at that is look at your history. If you have a history of constantly pivoting, constantly changing directions, constantly giving up, constantly thinking that the shiny object of the next new thing is going to be the thing. What you have is a habit and you need to break that habit. You need to develop the muscle of stick to itiveness, right? Like you need to develop the ability to stay the direction even when shit gets hard. You need to develop the patience to play the long game because I did this for years, like for years early in my career, like I was just constantly changing directions. Call it my ADHD, call it like personality course, call it lack of discipline, whatever the fuck you want to call it. What it was, was the inability to stay the course for a long enough period of time to actually get the results that I actually wanted. And if you don't check that, you're never going to get the traction that you want. And that really sucks if it's because of pivots, because you're going to be working your ass off forever and you are never going to get the results that you really want. So is future you going to be going through the exact same process that you're having right now? And if so, stay the course. So these are six questions that helped me work through a new opportunity and get to a point, like I said, where I've got conviction. I've made a decision, we've got conviction, we know exactly where we're going, but this is the process that I personally use to evaluate this. And I did this over the course of a couple of weeks. So I hope this framework is helpful for you and you can revisit it anytime that the new opportunity comes up because I promise you it's gonna come up over and over and over again. And the more successful you are, the more tempting the shiny objects are gonna be, okay? So again, hope it helps. If it has, subscribe to the channel for more business tips. Adios.